Hope is something we all need, especially right now. Many of us have experienced feelings of depression, anxiety and despair, or are trying to support those we care about through the challenge of mental health issues. And sadly, many of us have experienced the loss of a loved one who have taken their own lives. My name is Cheryl and I work for Conway Libraries. My professional role and personal passion involves raising the profile and power of books and reading to support our mental health. One of the schemes public libraries deliver is Reading Well Books on Prescription, which was developed by clinical psychologist Professor Neil Frude and is managed by the Reading Agency. It's a medically endorsed scheme proven to be effective and beneficial in supporting those living with mental health issues. The range of self-help books on the list include those written by people who have lived through or are living with a mental health diagnosis. One of these books is by Matt Haig and it's called Reasons to Stay Alive. It's the true story of how Matt came through crisis and battled through a mental illness which almost destroyed him. It's a book which offers us a story of hope. Over the next few days, we're going to give you a flavour of Matt's book, and I'd like to thank the publishers Canongate and Alolva for giving permission for us to bring the book to you in this way. I'd also like to thank everyone who agreed to take part in this project by filming themselves reading extracts from this inspiring and informative book. We really do hope that by sharing Matt's book in this way, it may help us all to see or discover, even if things feel bleak or impossible, our own reasons to stay alive. There is no right or wrong way to have depression, or to have a panic attack, or to feel suicidal. These things just are. Misery, like yoga, is not a competitive sport. But I have found over the years that by reading about other people who have suffered, survived and overcome despair, I have felt comforted. It has given me hope. I hope this book can do the same. One of the key symptoms of depression is to see no hope, no future. Far from the tunnel having light at the end of it, it seems like it is blocked at both ends and you are inside it. So if I could have only known the future, that there would be one far brighter than anything I'd experienced, then one end of that tunnel would have been blown to pieces and I could have faced the light. So the fact that this book exists is proof that depression lies. Depression makes you think things that are wrong. But depression itself isn't a lie. It is the most real thing I've ever experienced. Of course, it is invisible. To other people, it sometimes seems like nothing at all. You are walking around with your head on fire and no one can see the flames. And so, as depression is largely unseen and mysterious, it's easy for stigma to survive. Stigma is particularly cruel for depressives because stigma affects thoughts and depression is a disease of thoughts. When you are depressed, you feel alone and that no one is going through quite what you're going through. You're so scared of appearing in any way mad, you internalise everything and you are so scared that people will alienate you further so you clam up and don't speak about it, which is a shame as speaking about it helps. Words, spoken or written, are what connect us to the world. And so speaking about it to people and writing about this stuff helps connect us to each other and to our true selves. It was in part through reading and writing that I found a kind of salvation from the dark. Words, just sometimes, can set you free. Minds are unique. They go wrong in unique ways. Our experience overlaps with other people's, but it's never exactly the same experience. 
Umbrella labels like depression and anxiety, panic disorder and OCD are useful, but only if we appreciate that people do not all have the same precise experience of such things. Depression looks different to everyone. Depression is hard to understand. It is invisible. It is not feeling a bit sad. It doesn't always have an obvious cause. It can affect people, millionaires, happily married people, people who've just landed a promotion, people who exude happiness in their status updates, who seem from the outside to have no reason to be miserable. It is mysterious even to those who suffer from it. Depression is a disease so bad that people are killing themselves because of it in a way they do not kill themselves with any other illness. Yet people still don't think depression really is that bad. If they did, they wouldn't say the things they say. Things that occur in the mind can often be hidden. When I first became ill, I spent a lot of energy on looking normal. People often only know someone is suffering if they tell them. And with depression, that doesn't always happen, especially if you are a male. When you are at your lowest ebb, you imagine wrongly that no one else in the world has felt so bad. I pray to be these people, any of them, the 80 year olds, the eight year olds, the women, the men, and even their dogs. I crave to exist in their minds. I could not cope with the relentless self-torment, just the sheer exhaustion of never being able to find mental comfort. I cried. I'd never been one of those males who were scared of tears. Yet weirdly, depression didn't make me cry that often, considering how bad it was. But now they came. The dam had burst. And once they came, they couldn't stop. Men traditionally see mental illness as a sign of weakness and are reluctant to seek help. Boys don't cry, but they do. We do. I do. If you are a man or a woman with mental health problems, you are part of a very large and growing group. Many of the greatest and toughest people of all time have suffered from depression. Politicians, poets, philosophers, scientists, boxers, peace activists, war leaders, and a billion other people fighting their own battles. You are no less or more of a man or a woman or a human for having depression than you would be for having cancer or cardiovascular disease or a car accident. So what should we do? Talk, listen, encourage talking, encourage listening. Keep adding to the conversation. Stay on the lookout for those wanting to join in the conversation. Keep reiterating again and again that depression is not just something you have to blush about, it is a human experience. A boy, girl, man, woman, young, old, black, white, gay, straight, rich, poor experience. It is not you. It is simply something that happens to you. And something that can often be eased by talking. Words, comfort, support. It took me more than a decade to be able to talk openly, properly to everyone about my experience. I soon discovered the act of talking in itself is a therapy. Where talk exists, so does hope. Depression is an illness, yet it doesn't come with a rash or a cough. It is hard to see as it is generally invisible. Even though it is a serious illness, it is also surprisingly hard for many sufferers to recognize it at first. These are some of the most frequently cited signs that someone is depressed. Fatigue, if someone is tired all the time for no real reason. Low self-esteem, a hard one for others to spot, especially in those people who aren't that comfortable talking about their feelings. In certain cases of depression, slow movements and slow speech may happen. Loss of appetite, though a massive appetite increase might be a symptom too. Irritability, 
though to be fair that can be a sign of anything. Frequent crying episodes, the inability to experience pleasure in anything, sudden introversion. Life is hard. It may be beautiful and wonderful but it is also hard. The way people seem to cope is by not thinking about it too much but some people are not going to be able to do that. Humans might well be the only species to feel depression as we do. But that is simply because we are a remarkable species, one that has created remarkable things. Civilization, language, stories, love songs. As Emily Dickinson, eternally great poet and occasionally anxious agoraphobe said, that it will never come again is what makes life so sweet. Reasons to stay alive. Things aren't going to get worse. You want to kill yourself. That is as low as it gets. There is only upwards from the here. You hate yourself. That's because you are sensitive. Pretty much every human could find a reason to hate themselves if they thought about it as much as you did. So what? You have a label. Depressive. Everyone would have a label if they asked the right professional. That feeling you have that everything is going to get worse. It's just a symptom. Minds have their own weather systems. You were in a hurricane. Hurricanes run out of energy eventually. Hold on. Ignore stigma. Every illness had stigma once. We fear getting ill and fear tends to lead to prejudice before information. And depression is often seen as a weakness or personality failing. Nothing lasts forever. This pain won't last. The pain tells you it will last. Pain lies. Ignore it. You will one day experience joy that matches this pain. Life is waiting for you. Hang on in there if you can. Life is always worth it.